hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel so in today's video we are going to be applying what we learned in the previous video which was the browns method which falls under the exponential smoothing method when you are doing a time series right so just a quick recap under the exponential smoothing method you have the browns method the health method as well as the lenses method so in today's video we are going to be focusing on the browns method right so you should know the formula, not by head. The more you apply it, the more you will know it, but it's in your formula sheet. And the formula says AT. Sorry, just a minute. The formula says the Brown's method formula, right? Says your AT. It's equal to your A, which is your smoothing constant. Y A T plus 1 minus A times A T minus 1, right? Okay, so your A1 will always be equal to your Y1, right? So A1 will A always be equal to your Y1. And remember, your A T predicts your Y T plus 1. Right, your error term will always be your y minus your a t minus one because of this relationship here. Okay, so let us apply what we learned. Right, so I've already done the first three. I'm just gonna show you how I did them. So for number one, for the first for t one, a t a1 is equal to y1, so hence it is 63. Okay, for the second one, A2, excuse me, A2 is equal to your A, which is 0, 0,1, times the y value that corresponds to that, which is 63, plus 1 minus 0, 0,1, which is your A, times the previous A, which is A1, because we had A2, so it's going to be 63 and then you will get 63 when you put it into your calculator your a3 is equal to 0 0,1 times the y value that corresponds to a3 61 plus 1 minus 0 0,1 times the previous a 63 and you will get 62,8 right you do the same for the rest of your um, values okay coming to the okay before we go to the error term let's just say a question said predict y y hat four right if they ask you to predict the sales of time period four remember what i said a t predicts y t plus one meaning that when i want the prediction of the sales at y for i need to go to the previous a right this is four so i need to go to a3 so this will be equal to a3 which is equal to 62,8 right this is a very important concept if they ask you to predict the sales for time period four you do not go ahead and like calculate a4 you calculate a3 because remember a3 predicts the next sales right a4 will predict um y5 a5 will predict y6 etc okay let's just do the a's first so that you guys understand so for the so we have two smoothing constants in this example we have the smoothing concept constant of a is equal to 0, 0,1 and the smoothing constant of A is equal to 0, 0,2. And this goes back to what we learned in the previous video that sometimes you might be asked to prove which A is the best, right? So you'd have to calculate your error terms and do a bit of another step where you calculate your mean absolute error terms as well as your mean squared error terms and see which one has the lowest value and then choose that one. So that's what we are going to be doing in this example. I also wanted to show you guys how to apply the formula that you guys should like be aware of which is this formula when you're using Brown's method i also have to emphasize that when you are calculating at you are predicting 
yt plus 1, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the at for the smoothing constant a is equal to 0, 0,1. So as I said, a1 is always equal to y1. So here's your y, 63. Okay, this is for a is equal to 0, 0,1. For your a is equal to 0, 0,2. Same formula, at is equal to a y t plus 1 minus a times a t minus 1, right? So your a now is 0, 0,2. We are at a2. We said a1 is equal to y1, which was equal to 63, right? So your y value that corresponds to a2 is 63. So times 63 plus... 1 minus 0, 0,2 times the previous A, which was 63 in this case. Okay, you should get... As I'm doing the calculations, please try to do them with me so that you understand them better. 69,3. Excuse me. So 69,3, right? Okay, next one. A3 is equal to 0, 0,2. The sale of time 3, 61. Plus 1 minus 0, 0,2. The previous A, 69,3. Put this in your calculator. comma five seven. Right, and then you write it down. 74,57. You do A4. A4, 0, 0,2. The sale for A4, right? The sale is 64. Times 64 plus 1 minus 0, 0,2 times the previous A, 74,57. Go to your calculator. It's as easy as that. Right? If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below and i'll get back to your questions and to those of you who haven't subscribed please click that subscribe button click that like uh, like button and share the video so that helps somebody else so this is your a4 you write it down 79,913 a5 which is the last one we are doing a5 0, 0,2 times the sale of time T5, 63. Plus 1 minus 0, 0,2 times the previous A, 79,913. Right? comma five two one seven. 84,5217, right? So it's as easy as that. So now we need to calculate our error terms, right? So remember the concept that I, um, that I emphasized at the beginning of the video, that your A1 is equal to your Y1. Your AT predicts your Y hat T plus 1, meaning that if I want, remember that the error term is always equal to the actual Y, minus the predicted y if my at predicts the next y t right if at predicts y t plus one it means that the error term is equal to as usual the actual y minus whatever that was predicted by the a term so it's at minus one remember here y hat y was predicted by a3 which is equal to 62 comma Eight. So if I'm looking at the error term of y4, I will have to take the actual y. Let's look at this. This was for a is equal to 0, 0,1, right? So y4, I will have to look at the actual sale of what the actual sale of, of time period 4. So it would be 64 minus the value that was predicted. Remember that at predicts the Next value, A3 
right, predicted the next value, which was A4, which was Y4, sorry. So we will subtract 62,8. So that's what I mean by saying, let's see, the error term is equal to the actual sale minus the predicted Y value, right? And which A predicted the Y value that we are, for the time period that we are at, is the previous A, right? So, for example, I did the Y4, right? The error term for Y4. So, error 4. I said it's the actual Y, which was 64, minus the predicted sale for time period 4. What predicted the, 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 the sale for time period 4? It was A3. Hence, they said 4 minus 1, 3, right? So, A3. 62,8. I'm not sure if you guys understand, but I hope you do. So that's how we are going to be doing our errors using this. Okay. So I'm just going to be using my calculator. Right. Let's start with the one way our smoothing constant is A is equal to 0, 0,1. Right. So what does the formula say? Our error term is equal to the actual sale, which is Y. So 61 minus the A of the previous time period so 61 minus 3 minus 63 okay sorry about that guys um continue for the error term e4 right we said y Four, right which is 64 the actual sale of time period for 64 minus the a value of the previous time period so 62,8 minus 62.8 get 1.2 right error term for t5 is the actual sale right of time period 5 which is 63 minus the a of the previous time period Minus 62.92. 0, 0,08, right? Yeah. And then you continue with the rest of them. For the smoothing constant A is equal to 0, 0,2, you do the same thing. So you have 0, 0, 0 here. And then 63 minus 63, 0. 62.8 minus 69.3 remember it's the actual sale minus the a of the previous time period so the actual sale for time period 3 is 62.8 minus um minus the a of the previous time period so minus 69.3 69.3 you get minus And 6.5 right number four the actual y value 64 minus the error term of the previous one minus 74.57 get minus 10 comma 57 and then this one 63 minus 79.913 Minus sixteen comma nine one three, right? Then you go on and on and on until you get to time period fourteen. So I'm just going to pause the video for a moment and write down my values so that we can see which smoothing value or smoothing constant is the best one. I was talking and I wasn't recording. Anyways, I'm not sure where I ended because like I I, I continued to like explain after pausing the video. But I think I ended where I said I need to like fill my table, right? So you guys go ahead and fill this table. Okay. After that, you will find the sum of your error terms. Find the sum of your absolute error terms, meaning that you will take the error terms without their signs. Find the sum of your squared error terms, right? Meaning that you will square each number and then find the sum, add them together, right? Then going back to what we did in the previous section, um, the formula that you need to know is that you need to take 
the sum of your error terms, divide by n minus 1. Take the sum of your absolute error terms, divide by n minus 1. Take the sum of your mean squared error terms and divide by n minus 1. And then remember that this is done to choose the best moving constant, right? So the one with the lowest value is what you will actually choose. So let's do that. I'm annoyed because like I already did this, but I wasn't recording. Okay, anyways. For A is equal to 0 0.1, we have the values here, right here, right? So it says take the sum and divide by n minus 1. Our n is 14, so 14 minus 1 divided by 13, right? So you will take negative 8.2944 divided by 13. This is the answer you get, this one, right? And then do the same here, 13.7014 divided by 13. 1 comma 0, 0.5 there. You will do the rest of them, right? And these are the answers you will get. And then to choose which one is the best, you will not consider the mean error terms because of the effect of negative numbers. So if you guys remember from yesterday's video, um, the negative numbers cancel the positive numbers, which gives you a biased view of what your mean should be, right? So you will not consider the mean error terms. You only consider the mean absolute error terms and the mean squared error terms, right? So for A is equal to 0 0.1, which one has the smallest value? This one, right? No, I mean this one. The A is equal to 0 0.1. For the mean squared error terms, which one has the small one? This one. So you'll choose this smoothing constant of 0 0.1 because it has the smallest value. Think about it you have an actual y value and you have a predicted y value and what did we say the error term is the difference between what the actual is and what we predicted so you want the error to be as small as possible right so hence we choose the smallest of the values because it tells us that the, that the error that you have is the smallest in all in 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 the smoothing constants that you use so yeah thank you so much for watching Please comment, like, and subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Click. Let me wait for you to click the subscribe button. Okay, thank you. So in, in the next video, I'm going to be doing the decomposition analysis. Hopefully this video helped you. Um, yeah, please make sure you finish the table. Practice, practice, practice. It's only the perfect practice that makes it perfect. So practice and practice perfectly so that it becomes perfect. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye.